Chapter 7 The 25. Cruising down Interstate 66 on her way to work at the Washington Navigator in Washington, D.C., Azita focused on the beauty all around her. Sleep was something difficult to achieve for any length of time. Each night always went the same way. Sleep for an average of five hours, and then wake after a dream that seemed to be out of focus. The only exception was the dream of her rescue and laying eyes on Ruthie, her mother, for the first time. To fill the many hours a night, she often traveled the streets of D.C., in fact, the streets of nearly every place she had visited for a story. However, D.C. was her favorite as the Washington Monument glowed in the very early morning from a great distance away as if it were keeping watch over the city. Each time her eyes laid upon it, her thoughts turned back to the crystal she held when rescued as a little girl. Even though the monument was white with only four sides and her crystal was a light purple with numerous sides, the crystal was still her first thought. Azita could always tell when it was time to start heading to work without looking at the clock due to the bad traffic becoming worse. This was her third consecutive day reporting to the navigator. She could feel herself becoming anxious to get back on the road. She loved chasing down leads and researching stories. Sitting at yet another stoplight, Azita could hear her phone vibrating on the seat and knew who was on the other end without looking. After years of working with Tyler on extraterrestrial research, they had become pretty familiar with each other's routines but had yet to meet in person. She had used her investigative skills to locate where he lived after he had let it slip, that he and his town shared the same name. Knowing the town name was Tyler, Azita prompted him to describe the weather where he was with phrases like, It sure is hot here, or Will this rain ever stop? each time narrowing down where he lived until she settled on Tyler, Texas. Whether she wanted to meet him or not was still up to debate. There was just an odd sense of satisfaction that came from solving this kind of mystery. Good morning, Tyler, Azita said with just a hint of her Persian accent showing. Morning, Azita, I have a big one for you today. Another thing she had learned over the years while working with Tyler was every lead was big to him but Azita also understood he was the greatest source of information she had yet discovered. Well, don't keep me waiting. The traffic might suddenly clear, and I drive straight to work, she said jokingly. Azita, this is linked to the 25, Tyler stated excitedly. The 25 Tyler had referred to had been cause for Azita and himself working together. Azita had started the story while working on her college newspaper at Harvard University, and even then, it seemed to be a story nobody wanted to print. The story was also one that she could not let go of after all these years. The 25 referred to the number of top scientists that worked on the government Star Wars project during the 1980s, with each being killed or committing suicide by mysterious means, such as one tying a rope to a tree at one end and the other around his neck before getting into his car and then wedging down the gas pedal and driving off. New leads rarely were found, and when one was, Azita ran them to the end. Don't get my hopes up this time, Tyler. The last two had nothing to do with the project, she said, frustrated but still eager about what he might have. You are not going to be disappointed. The video that was sent to me was of a woman that worked directly on the project. You're not going to believe it. I've already sent the attachment to your email, Tyler informed her, his voice full of excitement. He was very paranoid about being spied on and tracked, especially with so many ufologists also seemingly dying under suspicious circumstances. Each week, he created a new email address for her and deleted the previous account. The password always stayed the same, but the email changed by adding the calendar date to the last email address, with the old one being Reporter3682 and today the 14th. The new user ID was now Reporter3696. Each time, the provider also changed, and it could be any one of five Tyler felt like using. It was up to her to locate which one. Even with the traffic slowly moving and the excitement of a new lead for a story consisting of years of work, talking on the phone is where she drew the line when driving. Checking emails and texting was something she never did, having reported on so many deaths due to the distractions. I will follow up on it when I reach work. Anything new on the Scorpion Lake sighting? Azita inquired. Not directly, but Phoenix 10 News is reporting three football players missing. 
Not sure if it's connected, but the last time they were seen was on a security camera outside a truck stop. Tyler's tone had lost the excitement it had possessed moments before. Azita thought about how the two could be connected, but was also uncertain. Can you send me the footage from the cameras? Having anticipated her request, Tyler replied, Already have. Excellent. I'm not far from work. Thanks for the new lead, Secure Force. Good day. Azita always tried to end the phone calls with what Tyler called his group, knowing it made him feel official. The Washington Navigator fought hard to keep up on workings of the nation's capital, but also balance everything out with stories from around the country, and that was where Azita came in. Even with the number of local reporters outnumbering those that traveled 12 to 1, Azita's research and writing skills evened the field. For that reason, no one ever questioned her work or when she watched videos at her desk, having rushed from the parking garage to her desk to do just that very thing. After locating the email provider Tyler had used this week, Azita pulled up the video having to do with the 25 and began watching. Instantly, she noticed it had to be taken on an old cell phone as the person walked through what looked to be a house. With the poor quality of the video, she figured it to be at least 10 years old. From the tidiness and books that appeared, this had to be the home of one of the scientists. Walking through the home didn't last long before ending in the bathroom where a woman with bound hands and feet submerged in a bathtub appeared. Having played the video with the volume off, she pulled her earphones from her desk and began the video from the beginning, hoping to catch a name. Within the first few seconds, she figured out the individual taking the video was not with the police department or any other government office, but the landlord of the deceased. I have seen many things through the years renting homes, but a woman murdered like this in a bathtub is a first. You were a great tenant, Kathleen Sienke. Damn, I could never pronounce your last name. Azita hit pause after hearing the landlord attempt to pronounce the last name. She clicked on the search bar and typed in Kathleen Sienke. After sifting through pages of academies and dog groomers, she finally came across the obituary for Kathleen Sienkiewicz, formerly of Chesapeake. The excitement built as she clicked on the link, but as she began reading the short article, it turned to disbelief. Kathleen Sienkiewicz, who was scheduled to speak at a local college this month, died today from an apparent suicide. The distinguished graduate from Oxford and Massachusetts Institute of Technology with multiple PhDs in fluid dynamics, genetics, and genomics. Kathleen was found having drowned herself in the bathroom of her leased home in Chesapeake, Virginia. No explanation has been offered as to why she might have killed herself. This, like many of the others, was a cover-up, but it still wasn't clear what for. All she had to go on was the fact all 25, now 26, worked on the same project. What is being covered up? Azita asked herself for the thousandth time. Knowing it would not be long before Jason called out her name from across the room to join the meeting, she moved on to the video of the missing boys. Her mind raced with the possibilities of what the new lead might reveal, making it difficult to concentrate on the next video. Having made it to the next surveillance video and watching it for the third time, she saw no new information. The video began approximately 10 seconds before four boys exited the truck stop with a timestamp of 8.27 p.m. The black and white video was from up high above the pumps facing back, covering the parking area in front of the truck stop, and to Azita's amazement, it was of very good quality. Now, though, starting it for the fourth and most likely final time, was the only thing she had taken from the video. Again, she watched as the four well-built boys around 18 years of age exited, joking and pushing each other like young men do. Seconds later, just like all the previous times she viewed the video, Three got in the front of the truck while one jumped over the side into the bed. Now that they were in the truck, she thought, now they back up, turn 90 degrees, and leave just like every other time I watched it. She was finding it difficult to stay focused on this video with so many questions floating around in her mind about the last. Azita knew the video would be over in about five seconds as the boys had backed up and were beginning to drive forward to leave, 
but it was just then that her eyes grew wide with excitement once again. Right before the truck pulled forward, she spotted what to others would probably seem like nothing more than a misdemeanor, two cases of beer sitting just at the back of the truck. Tyler, you outdid yourself today, Azita exclaimed, not believing her luck. Dancing her fingers across the keyboard and making a few clicks, the address of the truck stop appeared. With just a few clicks, she had pulled it up on a map, and a smile spread across her face as she realized the station was the last one before Scorpion Lake, and the boys were heading in that very direction. It was their beer I tripped over. But what happened to the fourth boy in the truck? She said while thinking back to the area around the two abandoned cases of beer she had discovered in a known party area while investigating the trioptic ship sighting. What was that, Azita? asked Kimberly who was the top dog of the local reporters but always seemed to want both local and national stories. Pretending as if she knew Kimberly had been there and to prevent her from becoming interested in the video, she replied, Oh, it is a missing teen story with four 18-year-old boys. You interested in the story? Azita asked it in a tone implying she really wanted to give it to her. Knowing Kimberly, a story about missing teens carried no interest. Appearing to curl her nose up at the idea, Kimberly snapped back, No, I have a more important story breaking at the Department of Defense. Then she walked off for the conference room. No sooner than Kimberly had entered the room than Jason stepped out, gesturing with his fingers for her. It was time to join the others. Wanting nothing more than to refuse and continue doing research on the two intriguing subjects Tyler had presented her with, Azita forced herself to close everything on her screen and enter the meeting. The minutes raced by as her thoughts were so entangled with the boys and scientist that she had not even realized Jason asking her a question. Azita! Azita! You with us? Jason growled, notably frustrated at having to repeat himself in front of others. Yes. I have a few things to follow up on, Azita replied, not sure what the question was, but figuring that was the most encompassing response she could give with this situation. That's great, but which story do you want to follow up on? The Idaho Senate race or the Texas governor scandal? Jason asked, knowing just which one she was going to pick by her reaction. Texas will work for me, Azita said casually as possible, all the while not believing what kind of wonderful day she was having. Jason slightly rolled his eyes and pointed to the door for her to leave. Get your packet from Laura. Your flight leaves at 11.30 a.m. No side trips. Azita walked quickly to the front office with a smile, mumbling, No side trips, right? Tyler, it's time for us to meet face-to-face, -face, buddy. 